think if you look at the field of pathology, we're in the face of technological transition at the moment and has high impact on how pathology is perceived in clinical practice and on the potential impact that pathology might have in the future. And there's two components to this. One is that we use digital pathology and methods, and in particular artificial intelligence applications, to do the things that we already do better, make it more reproducible, and provide these measures um, within clinical workflows to impact patient care. So what I've spoken about today is how we can use digital pathology and AI to perform tissue segmentation on clinical cancer samples to get more reliable measures of tissue composition to then inform multi-omic profiling. The second part um, that is more research oriented is trying to derive information from this pathological slide that pathologists at the moment are not consciously able to see. So we're asking the question how morphological features on a histological image associate with particular um, molecular um, changes in the disease and how that information can be used to improve patient stratification. So what I've spoken about today is how we can correlate morphology on colorectal cancer tissue sections with underlying RNA expression profiles. And what we've shown is that we can reproducibly predict RNA expression changes based on the histological image alone. And that opens the door to cheap and reliable workflows that just use the image information from a histology slide to make high-level predictions in terms of the molecular underpinnings of disease and the impact of these information on treatment. As I've outlined, um, we've got applications that are close to clinical translation. Um, so here it's really critical to implement these methods in clinical trials going forward. So this is the, the um, applications that I've mentioned regarding tissue segmentation, where we've got a number of studies from different groups showing that this is a robust method and that this can really provide benefit to standard clinical workflows. So here it's really about taking this new method and implementing it into practice. I think for the research applications, the next step is really um, to apply these methods in well-characterized um, clinical trial sample sets and particularly retrospective sample sets to get a good idea of what the actual clinical impact is on patient stratification. We can show that these methods work um, and that methodologically we're quite far, um, but to make the translation step it's really critical um, to go into a controlled setting um, and to deeply investigate the impact um, within known data sets uh, to have a robust framework going forward. What is most close to my heart um, is really moving forward into um, clinical sample sets. So I think the updates that we'll, we'll be are seeing in the future are um, validation studies and application studies um, within well-characterized clinical sample sets on one hand, but also further development of the method. So bringing in more um, samples to improve the classification accuracy, but also um, trying to expand the method from prediction of RNA expression profiles towards the prediction of other uh, molecular classifiers.